So this is the Nike Tempo, and a lot of people have been complaining about these air soles popping. And I've been fortunate enough to not have them completely pop, but this one right here is quite a bit noticeably um, low pressure. It really bottoms out, and it doesn't feel nearly as good as these other two um, that seem to have maintained their pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some air using this bike pump and I'll adjust the pressure using the pressure gauge and in theory uh, this slime sealant uh, should be able to seal up the hole that I make and hopefully the original um, slow leak or uh, if that doesn't work I can keep adding some air. So you might be wondering why don't I just add a valve like a um, uh, one that goes on sports balls. So this is a kit that comes with these valves that you can put in. And here's a tool. Um, with this side you pull out the old valve and with this end you insert the new valve. Now I didn't want to use these for this shoe project because as you can see it, it sticks in too far and it'll end up um, it'll end up touching those uh, tension fibers um, so there's just not enough room um, with these shoes but I do plan to use these for um, another shoe project so if you subscribe um, you can check that out when I when I get around to doing that. I'm, I'm gonna create my own um, air cushions, and they'll be inflatable with uh, a bicycle pump using this adapter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna poke a hole in it. So this is violating one of Murphy's law, one of Murphy's laws that says if it ain't broke don't fix it um, but in this case I'm gonna fix it and that looks like it's about the center of the air cushion alright so here it goes and I should hear some pressure come out okay there's a little bit of a noise there wasn't much in there so maybe it was basically dead. All right, and I have this needle that's used for ball pumps. Okay, so the problem I'm running into is that the slime won't go through a hole that's that size, but it will go through a hole that is this size. So it actually comes out pretty easily. Okay, this is an eighth inch bit, which is about the same size as the tip of that red cone, uh, but it won't actually make an eighth inch hole uh, because this material stretches. Okay, got to be careful not to drill through the other side. Okay, but I did go in. There's a piece of that um, material that holds the air cushion together. So now I'm having the opposite problem. I'm able to get slime inside that air cushion there. But when I add air, um, it's not able to seal up the hole. So it doesn't look like gravity is moving the slime down. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to thin it out, and I think if I shake it, um, it, should, uh, it should settle down on the bottom. So I filled a Sharpie cap with water, and I'm going to use that to pour some water in here. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty easy. Squeeze. 
for as I let go of the pressure. So obviously I need to add some glue to this hole so that the slime is able to, to seal that up. Um, the glue will make it smaller and um, be much easier to seal. But first, I want to test out a different way of adding slime that I think will be a lot easier. So here is a variety pack of syringes. So a lot of different sizes there. And then here is a bunch of different sizes of uh, blunt needles which are used for industrial purposes so not medical they don't have a sharp tip and so basically all of these all of these needles except for the one milliliter ones have a lure lock which allows them to take a needle and the one millimeter needles have a larger hole than the largest needle so I'll test that out too Okay, so putting on the needle is pretty easy to do. I'm going to put the 14 gauge needle on the 3 milliliter syringe. And then I'm just going to take this top off. And this will be the moment of truth here. Um, I'm going to see if I can suck up some slime. And no, that did not work. So that is too narrow. This one milliliter syringe has a larger opening. So I'll give that I'll give that a shot. Okay, that did fit in the hole that I drilled. Alright, so here it goes. Okay, that was pretty easy. So the first thing I'm going to do to seal up this hole is I'm going to clamp it. And what, that, what that's going to do is it's going to push out some of the air. And then when I release the clamp, it'll suck in some of the glue. Now I'm going to wipe off a little bit of the slime that came out. Well, all of it. I'm going to wipe the slime off, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with 91% rubbing alcohol, because that'll dry really fast. back with a dry paper towel and then I'll let that evaporate for a bit. Okay now that it's dried and it's been upside down for a while I can put the glue in. So I'm going to break the seal here. And I put some petroleum jelly on the threads so I can keep reusing this. It won't go bad too fast. Okay, I'm going to put a generous amount of glue there. I can uh, cut off any extra later. And then I'm going to release the clamp. Well, actually, before I release the clamp, I'm going to take a popsicle stick and push down on it. Make sure it's against that against that hole. Okay. So now I'm going to release the clamp. And that should suck in a little bit of that shoe goo into the hole. And so I'm going to have to let this fully cure before I go on to the next step, which is inserting more air. There's a couple different ways to do this to put the air inside the shoe. So the simplest way if you don't have a bike pump is you just put the needle onto a large syringe and then 
you can use the ideal gas law to calculate how many milliliters of air to inject into the shoe. Um, or you can just go by feel also. And the way you do that is you can either estimate how many milliliters are in this air chamber here, or measure it um, by injecting water in until it fills up. And then you take that amount, multiply by your desired pressure, and divide by atmospheric pressure. And then that would be how many milliliters that you want to put in. And the other way, since I do have a bike pump, I like the idea of being able to use this gauge. And it's real simple. Um, so what I really like is the idea of using this Schrader valve here that came from a bicycle inner tube. So that would connect to the bike pump. And just make an adapter so that this interfaces with this and then the air goes into the shoe. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. So the problem with trying to glue this is that this is made out of polypropylene which doesn't react with nearly anything and that's why it's used which also makes it difficult uh, to glue. So what I'm going to do is do something based on friction instead. What I'm going to do is put it on and then start applying tension in the beginning, right after I get it to stick a little bit. Okay, so I'm stretching it just a little bit as I'm going around. And then right there is my overlap. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep that overlap to about maybe one or two millimeters. So when I put this in, I'm going to twist it in that direction. And that's a pretty good seal. Look at that. That seal is going around and I believe that's going to hold air. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Wow. I can go to 40. Wow, that's going to work. So I'm going to put this 22 gauge needle on here. And this is connected to a bicycle pump. And here's the fill hole that I sealed up with shoe goo. And I'm going to get my hole started with this pin cushion needle and do it a little bit to the left there. Uh, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to go all the way through and then make a hole on the other side. So I'm going to mark my, my depth on the needle. All right, so I have the pin cushion needle and a small piece of that rubber splicing tape. And I want to go in about a quarter of an inch here. So I'm going to have about a quarter of an inch stick out. 
make sure that rubber goes a little bit past the head of the needle and then I'm just going to fold that and so I'll squeeze here so I'm pushing on the, the head of of the needle and then I'll go until this rubber meets the outsole of the shoe okay so here's the fill hole here I'm going to go there. So you can see from the side here. Okay, and I'm in. And that's as far as I have to go. Yeah, that's in. Uh, I thought that needle was going to bend a little bit. All right, this is my setup. The shoe is carefully balanced on a couple of my supplies, and I believe I'm ready to add some air. Okay, so here it goes. Okay, so I just took it to 30 psi, and in theory, should be able to lift that shoe up or pull the needle out and uh, should hold most of the pressure but I'm gonna go quick shit that didn't work all right that's the slime bubble hmm wow I can't believe that didn't work so the 22 gauge needle almost worked it, um, with the slime in place uh, through gravity, it did hold for a while with the pressure. And then I sealed this up with some shoe goo. Uh, but over time, uh, this has lost some pressure. Um, it may be close to zero by now. It's been quite a while. So here is a 30 gauge needle. This is very tiny and very sharp and there is quite a bit of resistance when I pull to, to put air in or if I push but I think that I have to go this small to get a reliable seal so this time I'm going to do this a little bit differently well first of all I'm going to hold Hold it like that until the pressure uh, stabilizes. So what I'm going to do is instead of going in between the tread, I'm going to go on the tread. And I'm going to do it right here, which is really close to where I added the slime earlier with, um, with a larger um, uh, filling size needle. Okay, so there's a good spot right on the tread and really close to where I added the slime. So I'm going to go in and that went in pretty easily. And this is going to take some pressure here to get the air in. Okay, now it's taking a lot more force. And Oh, I can feel the pressure in there. All right, and so I'm going to turn it this way so the slime goes down. And I don't hear anything. So I think that did seal. I uh, bent the needle a little bit, quite a bit actually, but these things are cheap. Uh, what I did was I got a whole box of a hundred of these really cheap off Amazon. So uh, the next one can just use a new needle so feeling this wow that's got some decent pressure in that and wow that's even more pressure than the other one that that hasn't been modified I have to say that was solid and that was really easy to do so just a 30 gauge sharp needle uh, 
non-bent and this is a 20 milliliter syringe and that was all it took actually when I had it all the way back that's more that's almost 25 milliliters right there and I put the whole thing in so that did it um, let me, I'm gonna feel the other shoe for a comparison here and I think okay this is the highest pressure of all the um, unmodified AirPods and let's see how that compares I would say they're very similar so that may be just right actually um, I might add just a little bit more and the nice thing is this it's pretty easy to do okay so I'm gonna take a brand new 30 gauge needle and I'll take the syringe let's see I think I'll add I think I'll add about hmm I think about 10 milliliters more so I have it at 10 milliliters put on the brand new needle and the trick is to pull the cap off without bending the needle so I'm going to use three fingers to do it go straight up all right now I'm going to pick a spot nearby so again I'm going into the tread and really close to where I added the slime. All right. And I'm going to put the more air in. It takes quite a bit of force when I get to this point here. So if you do this, it might be easier to use both hands on the syringe. All right, so turn it so the slime is going to cover the hole, and ah, oh, shit. All right, the slime's coming out there. So, all right, so I got my finger over that, and just shake it up a little bit. Make sure I get the slime right over that hole. And it stopped. Okay. All right, so you can see there's where some slime leaked out. And wow, it, it's holding the pressure. Cool. That's, that's quite a bit of pressure right there. And I don't hear anything. So I think this method will work. Um, yeah, wouldn't go any larger than 30 gauge. And there's one possible, it is possible um, that you might have to cover it over with your finger and turn it and shake it, um, but it will seal up. Um, I don't know for how long, but don't hear any air escaping, so I think this should actually work for running. So comparing the two blue air cushions now. I just get a sense of the pressure by squeezing this one and then do that to this one and I would say this one that I added air to feels like it has a little bit more pressure um, yeah yeah quite noticeably now it may lose pressure over time but I can um, keep finding more places to uh, to stick a needle. Now you might be wondering why can't I just put some slime here and then take a needle, poke it, go up and down and try to get the slime to go in and then use that um, to seal up the hole instead of drilling a hole and inserting with a larger needle. 
and I don't think that will work. And I'll show you a little experiment to demonstrate why I don't think that will work. So I have some slime there, and there's a piece of the outsole that's not directly over the air pod. So I'm going to take this uh, 30 gauge needle, and if I go down, you can see it's going through. There's no slime coming through here. So even if I even if I turn the needle, give it a little spin as I go down, and cross my fingers and hope gravity pulls some through, um, it looks like there's nothing coming through on the other side. So unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be as easy as that. Um, but the nice thing is, once the slime's already inside the pod, um, then it is pretty easy to, to continue adding air. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the slime is coming through a little bit. You can see that grain spot. It's underneath the shoe goo, but it did come through the, um, the outsole. So, in the future, what I'm going to do is, instead of using uh, one of these plastic needles, I'm going to use a metal needle with the same size inner diameter and then a narrower outer diameter here. And what that'll do is it'll allow me to use a smaller drill bit. And then instead of, instead of putting the hole, the fill hole in between the tread, I'll put it on the tread and what that'll do is that'll maximize the amount of bonding area that is inside the hole and then also instead of or in addition to sucking it in with the clamp I'll use um, the same needle well a metal metal needle uh, to put the glue in and so I think if I have a smaller hole that's on the tread here um, it should be should be stronger than what I did in this video.